Ha, uh, sorry. Hi, everybody. It's me, Sailor Moon. And it's me, Sailor Mars. And today we're going to do a review on Payback. Now, first, WWE Payback started out with the Payback kickoff show with Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy taking on Luke Gallows and Cal Anderson. Really good match. You know, a lot of people are going to uh, have their opinions on it. But I felt the match was really good. And I fought Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy. And Luke Gallows and Cal Anderson worked very well together. It was a really cool match. You know, I liked it. Felt the tag teams did very well. In my opinion, of course. And Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy, you know... Well, I try not to forget who actually won the match. That's pretty sad. But I think, you know, it was Colin Cassidy, Enzo Amore, but correct me if I'm wrong, you know. So we had kickoff itself with Chris Jericho versus Kevin Owens for the WWE United States Championship. Really good match. You know, I liked it. I felt that Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens worked very well together. And this being a third out of the three matches they've had against each other, I felt that it worked very well together. And I was surprised Chris Jericho defeats Kevin Owens and becomes the two-time WWE United States Champion. The next match we had, can I go on sale moon now? Sure. The next match we had was Austin Aries versus Adrian Neville for a WWE Cruiserweight Championship. Really good match. I felt Austin Aries and Adrian Neville were very well together. I enjoyed this match. Now some people are going to complain and they're going to try to compare it to the previous Cruiserweight ship division. You know, when it was the first time it was going on. You know. And I, that's their opinion, you know. But I think Austin Aries and Adrian Neville were very well together. Austin Aries wins by disqualification because Adrian Neville got himself to qualify by putting his hands on the refereeing from across the ring. Then the next match we had, we had the Hardy Boys, Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy versus Antonio Cesaro and Seamus Osari for a WWE Raw Tag Team Championships. And this is a really good match. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the Hardy Boys as they worked very well together. They've been tagging out for years. And also, Tony Cesaro and Sheamus Osari worked very well together. It was a really, another really good tag team match. The Hardy Boys, Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy, defeat Antonio Cesaro and Sheamus Osari. Then this surprise happens. Antonio Cesaro and Sheamus Osari turn heel, attack Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy, the Hardy Boys. So I guess we have a heel run for a heel turn for this particular tag team. Then after that we had Bailey bursting um what was it you know Alexa Bliss for the WWE Raw Women's Heavyweight Championship and I felt this worked very well together. I think Bailey and Alexa Bliss worked very well. I enjoyed it. There's going to be people who are going to complain you know, they're going to criticize, they're going to complain this match, they're going to claim it was their bathroom break or restroom break or whatever they want to call it, the loo break, um, whatever they want to call it. But I felt this was a really good match, and I was surprised. You know, Alexa Bliss defeats Bailey and becomes the new WWE Raw Women's Heavyweight Champion. After that, we had Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt in a House of Horrors match. Now, this match was a very surprising match because, you know, we had Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton attack each other in the living room, being attacked in a kitchen, attacked in a bedroom, using all kinds of weapons, chairs on each other, pots, pans, um, even lamps, you know. Bray Wyatt, you know, comes back to the arena by limousine, thinking he's won it all, and Randy Orton's there, and then he start, you know, Randy Orton gets more of the advantage on him then than he did when they were in the house. Used the chairs on him, went through the announce table, tried to bump for the announce table, 
And then Ginger Mahal and his henchmen play a role in the match. And Bray Wyatt defeat Randy Orton in the House of Horrors match. Really good match. I enjoyed it. I was, I felt it was really good. Now, some people are going to complain and say they're going to try to compare it to other locational matches or fights over the years that WWE had. They're going to, they're going to try to say they're going to have their opinion on it, you know. But anyway, I liked it. I felt it was good. Then the last map, then we had Seth Rollins for, can I go now, Salem or Shore? We had Seth Rollins versus Samoa Joe. Really good match. I enjoy it. You know, I felt that Seth Rollins and Samoa Joe were very well together. Um, this was a really good match. I enjoyed it. You know, Seth Rollins defeats Samoa Joe. Then we had Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman. And this was a really good match. I mean, I enjoyed it. You know, every time that Roman Reigns thought he had Braun Strowman beat, Braun Strowman would come back from everything. And then Braun Strowman defeats Roman Reigns. And then Braun Strowman decides to continue beating up and hurting Roman Reigns, you know, after the match. So this feud between Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns is not over, but continuing, you know. And I think it's a really good feud, you know. I like it. You know, Roman Reigns has to storylinely, you know, defend his yard, his newly acquired yard from interlopers and invaders. And I think it's a good thing. People have their theories over why Braun Strowman is doing what he's doing to Roman Reigns, though. You know, that's it. We felt, I felt payback was really good. I enjoyed it. I'm Sailor Moon. I'm Sailor Mars. We'll see you tomorrow.